Hello there! Welcome to Tech and Cash. Today we are going to go over our top ten tips for wingspan beginners. I'm joined by Flan from Winging It, who helped me to put together this list. So, how are you doing today, Flan? Hello, I'm doing very well, thanks. And yeah, thanks for having me on. All right, let's get straight to it. Our first tip is look for cheap and easy to play birds in the early game. Picking your starting bird is arguably one of the most important decisions you can make in wingspan, and it can be kind of overwhelming for beginners because there are 180 birds in wingspan base game alone. So when picking your starting bird, I would say look out for birds that are cheap and easy to play, and in general, you want to look out for birds that only cost one food that give you any brown power. Or birds that consume one food and give you four to five points. Those are the birds you should play and try to keep in early game. Yeah, I think you make a really good point. You know, there's a lot of birds to choose from,、um, and when you're given five of those, even that can be difficult to choose which out of the five you want to keep. But yeah, I'd say you know, there's those cheaper birds that are only going to cost one food.、Um, you can get those done really quickly. So you know, particularly some of these birds in the forest that are either going to get you points, so like the Cooper's Hawk. Um, and the chickadee as well are going to get you points, but something like the gnatcatcher is really good because that helps you get more food as well、um, to get even more of these birds down early on. So, and yeah, some of these birds in the wetlands as well, you know, the grebe, the snipe, and the osprey, all a single food for five points,、um, and some good brown powers in there that are going to get you, you know, even more cards or more food, which is really what you need early on. Yeah, absolutely. If you want a detailed analysis of all the birds in wingspan base game, you can also check out the tier list that Flan and I put together, and it's on Tuck and Cash. For tips number two, prioritize developing your wetland and forest before the grassland. In early game, I would say cards and foods are the more difficult resources to obtain. As you can see on the board, you can only gain one food and one card in the early game. So typically, I would like to have at least two birds play in the wetland and the forest as soon as possible, so that I can get two cards or two food without spending additional resources. Yeah, I think that's a really good tip. You know, I like to try and get a brown power if possible. In either the forest or the wetlands, but really just focusing on at least getting one or two birds down in each of those habitats,、um, just so that you are able to, you know, at least get two things per turn rather than just one.、Um, it helps, you know, make the most out of each of your turns. And yeah, if you can get a second bird down, then you don't have to worry about trading away precious things like eggs and cards just to get more resources in the early game. All right, tips number three: try to plan at least one or two turns ahead. So there are four basic actions in wingspan, and it's important to think about the order of how you're gonna carry out those actions. So in general, for example, I like to lay eggs before I activate my wetland so that I can exchange eggs for additional cards that I can pick up. And in general, I also like to pick up cards before I activate my forest so that I know what food that I need to play those birds. Yeah, I think it's also a good idea just to at least get those brown power birds down before you activate those habitats, so that you are at least able to, you know, make the most of those powers.、Uh, one thing I'd also say is, you know, if you know that you're going first in the next round, then at the end of the round you want to make sure your wetlands is set up in such a way that you're able to draw cards, because it's not often that you get to see those three new birds in the bird tray. So being able to maximise on that and be able to draw cards when those come up is so important. Yeah, I mean that's a very good point. Every time when the bird tray refresh, that's typically the best timing to pick up cards because you get to see new birds, and even if your opponents are picking up cards, it will reveal even more birds from the deck. All right, tips number four: try to maximize the gain of each action or turn. So in wingspan, you only have limited amount of actions, and If you can maximize the value that you get off each action, that's really going to help you to maximize your score as well. So, for example, when I'm activating the wetland, generally I like to exchange eggs for additional card. So that means I can get the most card in one action. That also minimizes the amount of turns that 
I need to spend activating my wetland to gain cards. Um, and the same go for the forest. Um, if I have cards and birds that I don't want to play, I certainly would try to exchange those for food. Yeah, and I think that's where these kind of brown powers come into play as well. So, you know, you see with cards like the Wilson Snipe um, and the blue gray gnat catcher that we got in the forest, you know, these just help get you extra resources as well. So if you're able to get two or three of, of each of those resources per turn instead of just one, you're really able to make the most out of each of those turns. And like you say, you only have limited turns, so getting as much as you can from each of them is so important. Yeah, with that being said, I think one exception that I found was in early game, I typically don't exchange additional food for eggs because I just find those food to be so precious and it's better used to play more birds to build up your engine in early game. Yeah, that's a good point. Speaking about efficiency, you can really maximize the efficiency of your actions if you can build an engine where you can generate two different types of resources in a single habitat. So for example, if you have the chirping sparrow in the forest, then you'll be getting eggs in addition to food that you'll be gaining. So that can really help to save you a few turns in the early game for not activating the grassland to get eggs. The same thing go with having birds like the hummingbirds or the tauhi in the grassland. So when you activate your grassland, you are getting food in addition to eggs. Yep, and another good example is this wetlands we've got set up. So you can see we're getting eggs from the morning dove and we're also getting food from the osprey. So we're able to get all three types of resources in a single action. Uh, I think another good point around this is these birds where they can go in any habitat. So for example, the dove and the hummingbird. You really want to be putting these birds in habitats that don't already generate that type of resource. So you see the hummingbird gets you food in the grasslands. It's much better there than for example, putting it in the forest where you're already getting food from that action. Yeah, really good points. Building an engine that allow you to gain all the resources that you need in one or two habitats instead of all three is really the key to score really high in wingspan. All right, moving on to tips number six. Make sure you know all the overpowered birds in wingspan. There are a few birds in wingspan that are more powerful than the rest of the birds. These are the kill deer, the Franklin's gull, and the ravens. So as you can see for their brown power, for example, the ravens allow you to discard one egg to gain two food of your choice. And the kill deer and the Franklin's gold allow you to discard one egg to draw two cards from either the tray or the deck. And these birds are best play in general in the grassland so that you can generate eggs or points in addition to the other resources such as cards and food. Yeah, and I think when you do have these really strong birds, you can kind of ignore our earlier tip about developing each of your other habitats. So, you know, if you've got a kill deer or a Franklin's gull, you don't need to waste turns developing your wetlands because you, know, you won't need to use it with those brown powers in your grasslands. Another strong bird that I think is quite often overlooked by beginners uh, is the wood duck. So it's unique in that it's the only bird that generates cards in the forest so you're able to get food but you're also able to get birds at the same time and yeah you can just save yourself turns by not having to draw birds from your wetlands when you've got the wood duck in the forest absolutely these birds are so powerful if you see them in your starting hands or in the tray in early game you should definitely look into picking them up and playing them as soon as possible all right next tips number seven don't get blinded by your starting bonus card. So, not all bonus cards in wingspans are created equal. Some are definitely better than the other. Bonus cards like Ecologies and Ulogies are some of the best bonus cards in the game because you'll be playing birds and laying eggs anyway, and this bonus card help you to score additional points on top of that. And another class of bonus card that I find really strong in the games are the cards that give you two points per bird that satisfy the condition. For example, the falconer and the rodentologist. So these are the bonus card I will look to keep if they are in my starting hand. Like you said though, not all bonus cards are created equal. So I think we've got a couple of good examples here of bonus cards that really aren't gonna score a lot of points. So. Um, one in particular that I see a lot of beginners get stuck with is the Backyard Birder. 
a bonus card like this really isn't worth focusing on, you know, even if you're able to maximize it. You've had to play seven birds and you're only getting six points from it. Um, and the bird feeder as well, you're only getting seven points and you can easily score six or seven points from playing a single bird. Uh, I really wouldn't focus too much of my energy on bonus cards like this that are going to contribute such a small proportion of your final score. Yeah, very good point. And if you want to learn more about our thought on each of this bonus card, you can also check out the bonus card tier list that we made on Tuck and Cash. All right, tips number eight. Pay attention to your opponent's actions and use that to your advantage. On the surface, Wingspan might seem like a solitaire game, but as you get more familiar with the game, you realize and notice that there are actually a lot of players' interaction, and you can really bring your gameplay to the next level if you can anticipate what your opponent's next action is going to be and how to take advantage of the birds that they already play. For example, when you see your opponent playing the hummingbird, you can kind of anticipate getting some free food from your opponent when they activate the hummingbird. So with the free food, that means you might be able to skip activating your forest or use those food to play birds to continue to build your engine. And the same thing go to birds with brown powers such as the Wilson Snipe that allows all players to draw cards from the deck. So with those extra cards from your opponent, you can also look into exchanging those cards into food that allow you to play more birds. You can also look to benefit from your opponent's actions through birds you play yourself. So for example, with a pink power bird like the Cuckoo, you're able to get free eggs every time your opponent activates their grasslands. So if you see that one of your opponents is setting up a really strong grasslands, you can play these birds and it just helps you get three points. And these are really strong birds already in you know, two or three player games, but the more players you have, the stronger these birds are. So I definitely would look to get you know as many of these down as possible. Yeah, very good points. And these are just a few ways you can take advantage of your op opponent's actions as you're becoming more advanced you can also think about denying cards that your opponent needs or strategically skipping your brown power so that you don't give the resources that's critical to your opponent. So bottom line, don't just focus on your board. You have to check out your opponent's boards and know what they're doing as well. Tips number nine, calculate the potential point gains for each of your action. At its core, Wingspan is a engine building game. So you spend your early game building your engine, but as you enter the mid and late game, that's when you want to start thinking about running those engines and maximize the score that you can get from those engines. So one important exercise that I do when I play Wingspan is to calculate what are the potential points that I can gain from each action. And that's especially important when I have a few options on what I can do and calculating the points can really help me to figure out what's the best option that help me to maximize the score. Yeah, I think that's a really good thing to get in the habit of doing. So we've got a good example on the board here where you know, it might look like a good idea to play something like the Hooded Warbler because it's seven points, but you've got to bear in mind that after you've spent the egg cost, it's actually only going to get you six points. And with this grasslands that we've got, uh, that's going to get you at least eight or nine points from activating that. So you're better off in most circumstances going for the grasslands here and just laying eggs, bearing in mind that every egg that you lay is going to get you a point at the end of the game. Yeah, very good point. Things like tug cards are one point, and you can also get tug cards from hunting as well. So definitely practice calculating the points of your actions. All right, here come the last tip on our list. And it's really more of a reminder that in Wingspan, you win the game by scoring the most point, not by playing the most birds. As we already discussed, sometimes you might score more points by running your engine or laying eggs rather than playing another bird. Yep, as tempting as it might be to play another bird on that last turn, in a lot of situations, you are better off just laying eggs, remembering that you are going to get a point for each of those. So it's always worth trying to maximize that score at the end rather than just fill up the board. All right, there you have it. That's our top 10 tips for Wingspan Beginner. 
And I must say, these are not hard and fast rules. As you play more wingspan, you're gonna run into different board, different situation. But hopefully, this general tips is going to help to improve your gameplay and your overall scores. Is there anything you want to add, Flan? No, I think that covers all the important stuff. Really,、um, the only other thing I would add is that if you are playing on the digital version, it's definitely better to use the board view rather than the habitat view. Um, like you can see here, as you were playing in the physical game, you just have a more complete overview of all the birds in all your three habitats at once, and yeah, helps make you make better decisions when you can see everything you've got down all at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. That's my preferred way of playing the digital wingspan as well. Well, with that. If you want to check out more wingspan tutorial, you can also check out Flan's channel, Winging It, on YouTube for more content. Yep, thanks, Tay. I've got a mixture of gameplay and strategy videos over there on my channel. So, yep, definitely recommend checking that out if you're newer to the game and looking to pick up more tips like what we've discussed in this video. All right, that wraps it up. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy watching this video and find this useful. Stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.